to help ease the administrative burden of manually configuring an IP version 6 address for the link local address, for the unicast address on a router interface, we could use the EUI 64 address. That's the extended unique identifier. What we're doing is taking the MAC address on a router's interface or another IPv6 speaking device and using that as the basis for creating the interface ID portion of an IPv6 address. If you recall the basic format of an IPv6 address, the last 64 bits were referred to as the interface ID. What we can do again as a time saver is to take that MAC address and use that for the interface ID. But we've got a challenge. The challenge is the MAC address, it's only 48 bits long. We need a 64-bit interface ID. What can we do? That's what this EUI64 standard is all about. It tells us how to manipulate that MAC address to convert it into a corresponding 64-bit address that can be used as the interface ID in something like the link local IP address on a router interface. Or when we talk about auto configuration, we can dynamically learn from the network what our globally unique network address is and then just append to that this EUI64 address. To illustrate how we take a 48-bit MAC address and convert it into a 64-bit interface ID, let's go through an example together. Let's say that R1 on screen has a fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface and its MAC address is 0015.2BE4.9B60. And we want to use that MAC address as the basis for the link local address. Let's go through the steps together. In the first step, we're going to take those 48 bits in that MAC address and we're going to split it down the middle. Let's take that MAC address and divide it up into two different chunks, 24 bits each. Now that we've done that, we're going to insert in the middle FFFE. We stick that in the middle and now we have a 64-bit address. We're not done just yet though. When we're writing out our IPv6 addresses, typically we do not use a dot as the delimiter. Instead, we use a colon as the delimiter, so let's make that change. And something else we need to do, we need to do something with the seventh bit in these 64 bits. To do that, we want to take the first couple of hexadecimal digits, 00 in our case, and we want to convert those two hexadecimal digits, which would be 8 bits total, we want to convert that into binary. Well, obviously, 0, 0, and hex is going to be all zeros in binary. What we want to do, though, is flip the seventh bit. In other words, if the seventh bit is a 0, let's change it to a 1. If it's a 1, let's change it to a 0. By the way, why are we focusing in on the seventh bit? Well, the seventh bit in a 48-bit MAC address, that's referred to as the UL bit. That bit is set to a zero if we're saying the MAC address is universally unique. And we set it to a one if it's locally unique. Typically, that seventh bit is going to be a zero, as it is here. And we're going to flip it. We're going to change it to a one. Now that we've made that flip of the seventh bit, we want to convert these eight bits back into a couple of hexadecimal numbers. And now we've reassembled these 64 bits. This is our EUI 64 address. 0215 colon 2BFF colon FEE4 colon 9B60. We can now use this EUI 64 address as one example to create our link local address. Do you remember the format of a link local address? It began with FE80 colon colon, and we're just going to stick this EUI64 address on the end of that. This means our link local address is FE80 colon colon. We're going to leave off that leading zero in the EUI64 address. We don't need to write that in our hexadecimal field. So we've got FE80 colon colon 215 colon 2BFF colon FEE4 colon 9B60. That's one use of the EUI64 address. We've used our MAC address, converted it into this EUI64 format, and then used that to construct the link local address for this router interface. Mm -hmm.